Hi, this is Jay Smith. I'm sitting here in London and this is my colleague, Hatun Tosh. Uh, yet we're here today because of what happened yesterday. Yesterday caused quite a furore down at Speaker's Corner, didn't it? Yes, um, like every Sunday, we went to Speaker's Corner yesterday and we took with us our 26 Qurans, 26 different Arabic Qurans. We're going to get to that, but um, it really did cause the Muslims a lot of anger. And you can see the video right before this one. Uh, take a look at the reaction of the Muslims. They reacted because they have been told, and every Muslim has told this, uh, that there is only one Quran. There has ever, only ever been one yeah. Quran. And this Quran is uncreated. It all has always existed in heaven. Uh, Surah 85, Ayah 22 refers to this. Uh, it was sent down to, they believe, the Prophet named Muhammad uh, between 610 and 632, 22 years. And they've been told that though it was not written at that time, uh, it was Uthman, the third caliph, then who was to given the responsibility to rewrite the Quran in the Qureshi dialect. And the reason for that is because if there's any disagreement, dialectical disagreement, that's a problem in and of itself. We're not going to talk about that now. But we get that from uh, Sahih Buhari, Sahih Buhari, which you will see on your screen. Sahih Buhari, volume 6. Hadith number 5, 9, and 5, 10. In 5, 9, it refers to the fact that, that Zaid ibn Thabit, along with three others, Zubair, Alas, and Hadith, were given the responsibility to rewrite the Quran. Yes. Very important that that was therefore when the Quran was written down. And then Uthman did a very curious thing. Uthman ordered all other written materials to be burned. Burned? Yeah. Why would you burn well, something? You wouldn't want people to see what people are disagreeing with. Obviously, these were disagreements. If this was just dialect, dialogical or dialectical differences or uh, different readings, then you wouldn't need to burn them, would you? Yeah. So obviously there is, must be one reading that we're talking about here. According to tradition, yes. According we to have, we should Abu have one. We should have one Quran from time of Uthman, one dialect, one version. Nonetheless, he then took the one, the one that he, the, the canonized one that Zaid ibn Tabi compiled, and he took that one and he sent it to all the different provinces. Now, we have a problem with that a little bit because we have found that there are more than just one province, aren't there? There's quite a few copies that were sent to others. There are many, there's a tradition of how many of these provinces there were. Uh, um, give, me, give me some of the ideas so of what we have found. Tradition, a bit confused how many provinces there were. Um, we read, um, there are some writings talks about there were four copies written and then sent it to the four major cities. Um, another tradition tells us there were five copies, one kept in Mecca. There is another And uh, the one tradition, tradition before is Abu Ahmad al-Dani talks about the one to four copies. Yes. Uh, a Suyuti who much later in the 15th, 15th century, century talks about the five copies. Yes. And then we, um, we read there might be six copies, one Uthman's personal copy and then one different from Medina. And then there is seven copy, that might be seven copy, which is Mecca, uh, Medina, Sura, Surya, Basra, uh, Kufa, Yemen, Bahrain, or Egypt. We read those things around 9th century again by Abu Hatim as uh, Sijistani. Or there might be some uh, commentaries, there might be eight copies. Well, so, tradition a bit confused how many copies made and send it around. What does, um, when it says to every province, how many provinces existed? So when we look back, we see in um, 7th century, there are nine provinces. Let me just list them all to you. You have okay. Basra, you have Baghdad, you have Damascus, you have Jerusalem, yeah. you yeah. have Cairo, you have Alexandria, you have Aden, yeah. then you have Herat and Nishapur. So you've got nine um, cities. I've got nine, nine that provinces. I count there. So it's not four, it's not five, it's not six, it's not seven, it's not eight. It is nine provinces that they were sent to. That's quite a few provinces. And obviously, uh, with the question we've asked many years, we've done this also at the Speaker's Corner, if there are nine of them that were sent out just 1,400 years ago, we should be able to find those nine. We can't find them, can we? Yes, we should have a nine co complete co um, copy of the Quran written down, complete, perfect, from nine different cities. We can't even find one. But today, one. we don't have anything. Not from the mid-7th century that is yes. complete. And that is exactly, exactly like the, the Quran that we yeah. have today. Now, beyond that, Uthman wanted to also be very careful. He wanted to make sure that every copy that was sent out, regardless of whether it was four or nine, that he sent somebody with each copy, did he not? Yes, um, as he sent people to places, uh, with every uh, Quran, there was were, there were one, one person who went to these places. For example, we know in Medina, Zaid bin Tabit, 
in Mecca, Abdullah bin Saib, in Basra, Amir uh, ibn Abdul Kuyas. Sorry for the pronunciation. Abdul Kais. Kais. In Syria, uh, Al Mukarid ibn Shuba. Mugira ibn Shuba. Okay. That's my American accent. And uh, to Kufa, Abu Abu Rahman al Sulaimani. Now, listen, just for those who are watching, we're desecrating the Arabic language. Please forgive us. She's Turkish, I'm American. Arabic is not our native language, though we read Arabic. Uh, we do not pronounce it as you do. Forgive us right off the top because we are going to mispronounce it all the way through, aren't we? So that's why we will put them uh, on the screen for you to see and understand what we are trying to Please say. Please read them on the screen for your own sake, especially those who are native speakers. We can understand that probably is difficult for your ears. Now, nonetheless, he wanted to make sure that every one of these, and, and we've got a great graph that we're going to put up right now, yep. that shows that there were problems even with those that went with each one of these copies. The characters, the teachers, not, didn't always agree with what should be in the Quran. In fact, there were students of the teachers that disagreed with the teachers, weren't there? Yes, but that goes back to time of Muhammad because we read from the um, Sahih Muslim and Sahih, Buka Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. There is a story talks about two people are trying to recite the journey to prayer. They are reciting the same surah, but uh, the way they recite the surah is different from one another. Right. One of the guy, um, you can get the full reference on the screen. One of the guy gets very angry with other guy's recitation. Both of them okay. goes back to Muhammad, and Mah Muhammad listened both of the recitation, and then he says, "Oh, that's fine. It's revealed to me in different ways." Right. Okay. So there is an admission that is revealed in different ways. Yes, that takes place, of course, before six thirty-two. Right. So in six fifties, there is only one. Like the Quran is on, written down as one in perfect, one form. One perfect. So when you form. write it down, there's not many ways to. I mean, you can read it by, diff by different dialectical readings, but we're talking about consonantal text form, the razm. The razm is the word letter by letter by letter by letter by letter. There's only one way to write that, that letter. Yeah. Now, there are many different ways to pronounce it. You're right, when you read it, you can pronounce it different ways. Yes, is that the reading that Muslims are confusing today? Uh, Muslim understanding of the reading is, looks like it is just the way you pronounce it. See, that's not how it's written, though. So. Um, Plus that it doesn't look like that is how it was how it was uh, in time of Muhammad because in uh, in the Sahih Bukhari the story I just told those two people are from the same place and they are reciting the same surah. Muhammad does say that there are different readings and why yes. don't you go ahead and, and read this and we'll put uh, it up on the screen because he does admit that there are different readings, doesn't he? Yes. Um, this is from Sahih Bukhari, Volume Six, Book Sixty One, Number Five. 14 and 561 and also you can read the similar stories from Malik Mubatta 15 hadith number 5 narrated by Umar bin Akatab I heard Hisham bin Khatim reciting Surah Al-Furqan during the lifetime of Allah's apostle and I listened to his recitation and noticed that he recited in several different ways which Allah's apostle had not taught me I was about to jump over him joining his prayer, but I controlled my temper. And when he had, comp he had com completed his prayer, I put his upper garment around his neck and seized him by it and said, Who taught you this surah which I heard you are reciting? He replied, Allah's apostle taught it to me. I said, You have told a lie, for Allah's apostle has taught it to me in a different ways from yours. So I dragged him to Allah's apostle and said to Allah's apostle, I heard this person reciting Surah Furqan in a way which you haven't taught me. On, on that Allah's apostle said, release him, O Umar, recite O Hisham. Then he recited in, in the same way as I heard him reciting. Then Allah's apostle said, it was revealed in this way and added, Recite, O Umar. I recited it as he had taught me. Allah's apostle said to them, It was revealed in this way. This Quran has been revealed to be recited in seven different ways. So, recite it whichever is easier for you. Or read it as, read it as much of it as may be easier for you. So, Okay, let me just ask you. So, recite it in this way, or this way, or this way, or this way. That means these are dialectical differences. Now, Hatun, if there were seven different ways of writing it yeah. with consonantal differences, 
then you, the question needs to be asked, which is the one that's in heaven? Yes, since Quran is the eternal tablets in heaven, uh, we would love to know which writing... Of those seven. Which written version Which was the one that, that, that um, the Gabriel, Jibril, recited to Muhammad? Uh, so tradition tells us um, Muhammad asked um, angel to give him different ways to recite because Muhammad knew people wouldn't able to recite as it was in heaven. So angel was kind of kind enough to Muhammad. Um, he gave him to uh, seven, seven different ways. So each so, verse was given by the angel seven different ways. Yeah, you can, you can say do that. Do you really so. believe that? Or do you believe that? Are we listening to this correctly? We, we read this story from the traditions. Tradition tells us angel made it, it easier for Muhammad and his followers to memorize it. So there was a bargain between Muhammad and angel and suddenly we had seven different ways of recitation and that according means to tradition. it could include seven different meanings it could be we're talking about seven different qurans then already uh, so muslim understanding of readings is it is just the way you pronounce it ah, it doesn't change any meaning that's what i'm getting at and can you see and we're talking to the people who are watching this really there is one way of writing it there are never many different ways of reading it now let me explain this if I were to go to Egypt right now, today in Cairo, and go to a newsstand and buy a newspaper, the newspaper I read in Arabic is written with only consonants and diacritical marks. There's no vowelizations. There's no dama, the U sound. There's no kasra, the E sound. And there's no fata, the A sound, the U, A, E. Those are the three vowels. They are needed for people who are in Libya or someone reading this newspaper in Jordan or uh, a, another Arab-speaking country will read it different than they do in Egypt. So in order to sell these newspapers in every one of these countries, they keep off, they do not put the vowelization. Yes. They keep off the vowels, the three vowels, the long and the short ones as well, so it makes it six. So by doing that, they are, they are able to sell their newspapers in all these different countries. And as you read it in those different countries, you put the vowelizations depending on your own dialect of yeah. Arabic. That is well known today. I think that's what this is talking about. So the readings are nothing more than the vowelizations, whereby the writing, however, which is consonantal, is the same. Otherwise, you're going to have seven different Qurans with seven different writings, with seven different meanings, so multiplicity of meanings. That is, yes, what kind of Islamic tradition tells us. So I just want to give the background. This is the traditional account. Okay. So now we are, have come to the 21st century. The 21st century now, um, we, okay, we want to do that because we want to talk about these readers. Now, let's talk about these readers because we have some readers, you say, that disagree. Let's look at Al-Duri especially. Al-Duri is one that ha has a problem with two of his teachers, does he not? Yeah, Al-Duri is the blind reader. Mm -hmm. So, um, Al-Duri is also a student to a uh, person, um, Abu Abdurrahman as Suleimani, who went to Kufa. Uh, and then one of his students called Al Qusra. So Al Duri is the student of Al Qusra. Also, Al Duri is student of Abu Amir ibn Allah, who was in Syria. Okay. So, as Al Duri kind of hears from his teachers, he learns from his teachers. Uh, in 2016, he leaves us two different Qurans. Oh. So, he leaves us a Quran which is disagree with his um, other other um, teacher. Uh, no, he, he disagreed with his other stu other, um, other students, other that, students from, from, the teacher. from the same teacher, from um, Al-Harid. Okay. Also, he leaves us another Quran, mm -hmm. which is he disagreed with, um, with Al-Susi, who, who is the other student in Syria, uh, Al -Allah. in Kufa. Yeah, sorry, in Syria. Yeah. Okay, so here you have Al-Allah, who has two students, Al-Duri and Al-Susi. And yeah. up here you have Al-Kissa, who has two students, Al-Duri and Al-Harith. Yes. Al-Duri disagrees with Al-Harith up here, yeah. and he also uh, disagrees with Al-Susi down here. Yes. So he's not, he's confused as to, and we're going to show some examples of this, are we not? Yes, we do have some examples. So the examples we're going to look at now are come from not just one Quran, not just two Qurans, not just three Qurans. You've been able to find 26 Qurans today yes. in Arabic around the Arabic-speaking world. What cities did you go to to find these Qurans? Oh, um, you can easily find these Qurans in North Africa, in Yemen, in Lebanon, in 
Jordan in Sudan. Okay. So it is so accessible for everyone to go and buy. They're in North Africa and in the Middle East. Yeah. And the Qurans you have here are from Jordan, they're from Lebanon, yeah. and they're from North Africa. Yemen and Sudan. Yemen and Sudan. Okay, so these are the ones that you have been able to collect. We may even find different one more on top of this. We'll still keep looking. Yes. We know that other groups have found 17. Uh, there are, in Jordan alone, we understand there are 22 different, different Arabic Qurans. And there you can see, these are the ones you've collected so far. And you're now going through them. You, uh, It's going to take years for you to get all the way through. But That's what fine. have you found? What have you found as you went through them? Why don't we get some of them off the pile there? Okay. And let's look at them. And let's look at these differences. Because it's these differences yeah. that are going to show us not only... Uh, are we not talking about readings? We're talking about consonantal differences, which means in a complete different yeah. reading. So, um, since we've got 26 of them, we haven't been able to look at all of them. So let's start with the... And while she's getting this down, for those who are watching, one of the greatest, the biggest anger yesterday at the corner, more, all the Muslims that were there, the, uh, of the vast majority were Arab speakers. And what bothered them, as we opened up these different Qurans, and we just had to open up any page, almost any Quran, we would find what we call manuscript variants. These are consonantal variants, not, uh, not vowelization, not reading differences, not ways of reading it differently. These are actually written differences between what each Quran and primarily between this Quran. Now, let's explain. This is the Hafs Quran. This is the Hafs Quran, which has been canonized in 1924, and this, this is acce accessible to everyone. So now, we can say the date again, 1924. You're saying that this book was finalized, was canonized. written down in its final form in 1924 at Al-Azhar University mm. in Cairo, in Egypt. That means it's less than 100 years old. It's not even 100 years old, which means... Well, Prince Philip is older than this Quran. It's a pretty new Quran. But this has now become the, the canonized. This has become the official Quran by, uh, by the Ibn Saud family in Saudi Arabia. That was done in 1987. So many people now know it as the Fad Quran. Even though we know it as Hafs, yeah. it is also referred to as the Ibn Saud or the Fad Quran. Because it is uh, Ibn Fad who is the one who actually gave the, the jurisdiction that that is the official text. Yeah. Now, that's the text that we use here in Britain, is it not? Yeah. Um, just don't get confused that we are, don't say like we are reading the meaning of the Quran. We are looking at this Arabic writings. So we are looking at the writings of Arabic. We are We're not looking doing at the, the Arabic. Translation. So this is the Arabic Quran, not the translation for those who, this yeah. is what she's saying. All right. Now, this is the one that we have used week in and week out all the time at Speaker's Corner. Yeah. When we do our lectures, when we go on overseas, this is the one we always take with us. The, the, the translation is Yusuf Ali. We're not yeah. looking at the translation. We want to look at the Arabic. Yeah. Now, what have you found by looking at the Arabic? And you have gone through this with your Arabic speakers. Yeah. So you've used native Arabic speakers who are, who all also teach Arabic, yeah. you ask them to compare the certain verses, verses with yeah. verse. Yeah. Let's go and let's look at some of them. So, uh, because I've got half a uh, Walsh version like longer than other other trans other versions, so um, let's start with the Vo uh, Walsh version. In fact, let's do that for lack of time yeah. because we could be here all day going through all 26 of those. Let's just do the Hafs, which is very popular in all of Middle East, it's yeah. also popular in Britain, and the Walsh, which is very popular in North Africa. The Warsh yeah. is one you'll find in North Africa. Okay. And let's start with what? Surah 2? Let's start with Surah 2, verse 10. Verse 10. Okay, right at the very beginning. Now, in Surah 2, verse 10, yeah. it says here, and you'll see, we'll, put it up on the, we'll put it up on the screen. It says, they lie. Yat dibuna. So okay. mine is yat dibuna. Okay. What does yours say? And I've got the Walsh version in my hand. In this one, it says, yuka dibuna, which means they were lied to, or you can also translate they they deny. So, in my version, the Hafs, they lie, is what it says. Yeah. That's Yaktibuna. But in your version, the Warsh here, it was Yukadibuna, which is they were lied to or they deny. We're putting this up on the screen for your Arab readers so you can read where they are. You will see it is very different. It is quite different because the, the diacritical marks and yeah. the vowelization are very much different. That is Surah to Ayah 10. Let's go a little bit further to Surah to Ayah 48. In Surah 2, Ayah 48, it says in my Hafs version, okay, that, um, That's the Ruh Quran. I'm sorry. We want the Ruh Quran here. Okay. So now you're getting another Quran. So this is the Warsh. Now we're going to the Ruh. It's okay. a completely different Quran. And it's known as the Ruh Quran. Okay, this is the Ruh Quran, uh, which goes back to the main teacher, is Yaqub in 
Al Hashami. We look at this surah 2, verse 48. And guard yourself against a day when no soul will in aught avail another, nor will intercession be accepted. Now, the word here is yukbal, but that is the wrong grammar because that is male. It should not be male, it should be female here. Okay, so in root version of the Quran, Surah 2, verse 48, it's uh, the word is tukbal. Or tukbal instead tukbal. of yukbal. Yes. So it is corrected. Yes, tukbal is for the context of the female. All right. Yukbal is the context of the male. So if you read the verse, it, it's context of the female. So uh, Hafs version got it wrong as a gram in gram grammatical Grammatical sense, wrong. But um, Ruf version of the Quran gets it correct. Corrects it and gets it yeah. correct. Now let's go to Surah 2, Ayah 125. If you can go back to your Warsh version again. Surah 2, Ayah 125. And we'll put this on the screen there. Yeah. Here you have, in the Hafs version, Etakizu. Etakizu, which means to take. Remember, we made the house a place of assembly for men and a place of safety. And take ye the station of Abraham. What does yours say in the wash? Okay. In the wash version of the Quran, it talks, it says, etakazu. So from etakizu, it's to, changed to etakazu. Which changed the meaning of the word, which is have taken instead of take. So it is suddenly like different tense. And different okay. words. And take ye the station of Abraham is changed to and have taken, taken. ye. Yes. So there's a completely different meaning to the text. Yes. It changes the tense of the whole text. Now let's continue on. Let's go to verse 132. And this is about Abraham and his sons in 132. And here in 132, as you can see, I'm holding it up here. The reference is Abraham enjoined his son. And the word is wawasa. Wawasa. What does it say in the wash? Okay, in wash it is as wa'awsa. Wa'awsa. Okay. So in wash, wash version of the Quran, it says, and Ibrahim instructed his son. So here you have an inclusion, an interjection in the wash of an of an aleph. Yes. An aleph is put between the two wows. Yes. That's an entirely different. I mean, that's a, a consonantal difference right there. They've imported a consonantal difference, a, a, a an aleph. Walasa enjoined has been changed to Wa'awsa instructed in verse 132. Now let's move on to 140. Surah 2, Ayah 140. In Surah 2, Ayah 140, in my Hafs version, it says Takuluna. So you say, Takuluna, you say. Okay. In Walsh version of the Quran, it, it says Yakulun. Ah, from Yakuluna. Takuluna, it's Yakuluna. Yes. That makes it third person plural. Yes. They say. Yes. Do they say that Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob? Ah, so it's even a question. Yeah. Do you say, so yeah. here is do you say, been changed to third person plural to do, do they, they say. say. Yes. So that has a hugely different, because yes. it's they plural versus you singular. So that has another enormous difference there. Now let's move on to Surah 2, Ayah 184. Surah 2, 184, says yeah. here, Ta'amu miskini. Okay. So redemption by feeding a poor man, a poor man, it's singular. So okay. Ta'amu miskini. But what does it say in the Warsh? Okay. In Warsh version, Surah 2, verse 184, Ta'amu masakina, which means ah. redemption by feeding poor man. So redemption by feeding group of people versus in house, it is redemption by feeding a man, one person. You get redeemed according to the house burden by just feeding one person. By the wash, you get redeemed by feeding many men. Yes. That's a huge difference because that also uh, has an impact on how you get redeemed, how you find redemption. Now, we're, let's go to Surah 2, Ayah 214. Surah 2, Ayah 214 talks about the past and the future so i want to because here you have completely different now in the huffs it says that they said hatta yukula that's the past tense that they said hatta yukula there you can read it on the on the screen yeah in surah chapter 2 verse 214 in wash version it is hatta yakulu which means is until they say so while in wash quran it is future tense 
In half Quran, it is past tense. So yakula is changed to yakulu. yakulu. Yes. And I hope you're seeing that on the screen. And those of you who speak Arabic, read it. You will see these are very different. That changes the meaning, either whether it happened or it will happen. Now let's go a few verses later uh, to Surah 2, Ayah 219. In my Hafs version, it's because here we're going to look at Hafs versus Abu Harif al-Duri al-Kisa and also Abu Amr um, al-Allah. So we're going to actually look at two al-Duris because al-Duri con contradicts himself in verse 219. Fascinating. In the Hafs version, while we're looking at it, you'll put it up on the screen there. The word is Kabir, great. In the Al Kisa and Abu Harith and Al Duri, it's Kathir. There's Al Duri saying that here is a light or a lot of sin. In them is a lot of sin and benefit for people. That is also repeated in Abu Harith. He says Al Kathir. In them is a lot of sin. So here you have one, two, three, four. Qurans that have al kathir a lot of sin. In the Hafs, you have it is great or big. And then al duri contradicts himself in another place, and he puts it back to Kabir, a big sin. So is it a big sin, which means a uh, size of sin, or is it a lot of sin, which means numerically many sins? So um, this, the Quran is I am holding, is uh, this is the Walsh one. And according to Walsh, it is big sin, so kabir. Okay? Kabir, and that would agree with the Hafs. Yes. And this is um, al duri Quran, but this is the one which he disagree with Susi, okay? And in this one, it is kabir, again, big sin. Big sin. Okay, it's ag the agree with the Walsh. Walsh and the Hafs. Okay. And in... In then we're going to get to the other one, and here we get to one okay. that disagrees. So, and then in here, I've got Abu Harid, which Al Duri is disagreeing with. In here, in Surah 2, 219, um, it is the Katir, so a lot of sin. So, there it's a lot of sin, which means many sins. Yeah. And the other one, it's big, which means a great sin. Yeah. That has completely different meanings. I've got another Quran, which is Abu Amir ibn Alala, Al Duri. In this one, Surah 2 verse 219 is Kabir, again big. Big again? Yeah. And then, so that's Al Duri and Al Allah. Yeah. And then I've got another one. This is Al Qasar Abu Hadid, what um, Al Duri is disagreeing with. Oh, here's Al Duri disagreeing with himself. Yes. Um, in Surah 2 verse 219, uh, the word used is Katir, Katir. which is. A lot. So that's a different word. So Al Duri here says big, but here he says a lot. Yes. A big sin versus a lot of sin. Yeah. That changes the meaning completely. I guess that's because Al Duri is the student of two different teachers and from two different locations. And in his uh, readings, according to the Islamic tradition, one of them is just a great sin, other one is a lot of sin. So the great sin, uh, Al Duri says that when he's with Al Allah, but yeah. when he's with al kissa he yeah. then puts it to a lot of sin. Fascinating. So here you have even a student disagreeing with himself, depending on what teacher he is with yeah. or what teacher he is studying under. Now, let's go to Surah 2, 271. The Hafs is Yukafir. So here it is Yukafir. He, he will, and he will remove from some of your misdeeds. He will remove from you some of your evil. What does it say in your... Okay, I am holding right now Al-Duri Al version of the Quran. Surah 2, uh, 271 is Mukafir. V. That means like, we, uh, we will remove... Fact, it is Nu Kafir. It should be with a Nun. Yes, of nun there. Yeah. Nu Kafir. That is we. Yes, we will remove. We will remove. Some so of in the Hafs, it is Yu Kafir, which yeah. is he will remove. In the Al-Duri from Alala. It yeah. is nu kafir, we will remove. Yeah. What about al-Susi? Uh, let me get that one. While she's looking at that, can you see this changes from some, he, who is he talking about here? Is this God who will re remove it? To we, can we remove sin? Are we able to do so? Unless God is plural. I doubt if God is plural. So it must be, this is a contradiction. So that has theological implications.
Yeah. What does it say in Al Susi? Um, so this is what Al Susi is disagreeing. Surah 2 verse 217 is Nukaffar. Again, we will remove some of your sin, some of your um, mistakes. Nukafir. Nukafir. Sorry, Nukafir. So that's like what well, Al Duri says. Yes. So Al Susi agrees with Al Duri and also Al Ala. They say that we remove, will remove from from you some sins of your yes, mistakes. But Hafs disagree with wow, them. Wow, Hafs wow, says. Wow. He will remove. He will that. remove. And I would suggest that there's some theological problems there yeah. uh, with the others. Uh, that's I leave with the Muslims to deal with. But can you see, this is not simple different readings. These are completely different continental yeah. texts. More than that, these continental texts change the meaning completely okay. from yeah. someone he, uh, which I assume is God, to we, which means us. We can remove the sins. That has enormous complications. Now let's yeah. go to Surah 3. In Surah 3, uh, we get into verse 146. Surah 3, Ayah 146. And now we're getting into whether they were killed or they fought. Uh, 146. Oh dear, here we go. The prophets, according to my Hafs, it says, it is Katala. There it is, Katala. Okay. And that means they fought. The prophets okay. fought. Okay. I've got um, Al Bazi version. Okay. Surah 3, verse 146. 46 is. Kutala. Kutala, wait a minute. Kutala. That means Which they were means killed. They were killed. So it talks about the prophets. It talks about prophets were killed. So in the house version, the prophets just fought. Yeah. They lived. Looks like they didn't die. Yeah. And in the full sentence, it will be how many prophets with him were killed. Ah, rather than how many prophets with him fought with him. Yeah. So how and how many a prophet fought with him and fought many religious scholars is yeah. what it's saying in the house. Yeah. And then we've got the same problem with the Warsh Quran. Warsh. 300 for, chapter 3 verse 146 again we are killed we're killed again so I've got, kutila. Kutila. I've got Warsh Quran I've got Al Bazi Quran they are agreeing with one another that we are killed but Hafs Quran is disagreeing with them it's fought past tense for the fight huge difference now you can't say that's just a reading difference that is a continental difference yeah. which changes the meaning changes the story and changes the implication of what happened to those, fought, those yeah. prophets did they die or did they live uh -huh. now let's go on to Surah 21 Surah 21 now, we're getting into uh, Surah 21, Ayah 4. And Surah 21, Ayah 4, in the Hafs version, it has Kala. Now, Kala means he said. So he's saying something. What does it say in okay. the Walsh version? In Walsh, chapter 21, verse 4, it is Kul. It's just say. So it's like God is speaking here. Say, my Lord knows. So okay. Arabic word used is Kal, which means say. Kul. Cool. Cool. So it's Kul here. Kala here, which means the prophet said. So here the, the prophet's speaking. Yeah. Kul, say. That's, yeah, God, that's speaking. God speaking. So yeah. here God is speaking in the words, and Prophet Muhammad is speaking, or whoever the prophet is, may not be Muhammad, in the Hafs, it's the prophet speaking. Yeah. Here man's speaking, God's speaking. Matt, that, that's, talk about theological difficulties there. I leave that with you Muslims. You've got two different Qurans bringing out a completely different theological implication. Is God speaking or is man speaking in Surah 21, Ayah 4? Now, Surah 28, Ayah 48. And we continue on. Surah 28, Ayah 48. I should have little stickers in here so I can get right to them. But I'm going to get Surah 28, Ayah 48. And here you have, fascinating. The word in Hafs is Sihrani. Two works of magic. They said, two works of magic supporting each other. And indeed, we are in both disbelievers. So two works of magic, Sihrani. What does it say in the wash? Okay. Wash version of the Quran, chapter 28, verse 48, says Sah Sahirana. Sahirani. Sahirani. So from which, Sihrani, it's Sahirani. Which means two magicians. Oh, hold on a minute. So in this sentence, it is, <laughs> they said two magi magicians are supporting each other. And in the Hafs, it says that two works of magic are supporting yes. each other. <clears throat> so is it an act or is it a person? Yeah. Folks, this, this changes the meaning quite a bit. Uh, you can see these are... Typical, common human errors. God would not make mistakes like this, uh, but man will. Yes. Now we get. Now we move on to Surah 34, Ayah 17. We awarded them because of their ingratitude. Punish we ever any save the ingrates. Punish we. So we punish. So this is Nugazia. Nugazia is we punish. Okay. In Walsh version of the Quran, chapter 34, verse 17 is Yugaza. Yugaza. Which means gets 
punished. So here we do the punishment to you receiving the punishment. punishment. One is doing the action, one is receiving the action. Yes, in von Schwan, you are the one who is receiving the action, punishment. I would rather refer, I would prefer the Hafsa, thank you, so that I'm giving it. Now we come to one that has caused an awful lot of, of this is the one that most people think is the problem. And it's always in Surah 1, Ayah 4, it's also in Surah 114, Ayah 2. And that's the reference to Malik or Malik. Yeah. Malik is king. Malik is owner of uh, the owner or the master. And many Muslims think that this is not the only problem. In Surah four, in Surah one, Ayah four, the in the Hafs Quran, it is Malik. Yes. In Volshvan, it's Malik without Elif. Sorry, it's Malik in the Hafs. Hafs Let yes. me get that correct. It's in the Volsh version. It is without Elif. It's Malik. That's right, Malik. Okay. So in Volsh translation, it is. Um, a king in the Hafs translation it is the master or owner of the day owner of the day yeah. so in the Hafs it's the owner versus it's the king now we brought this up at the speaker's corner yesterday and they said ah they're the same owner king king owns everything i think um it's it would be a very uh dishonest if we say they are the same because uh bible has been translated to many different languages and one of the languages arabic We've got those words are used in the Bible. Genesis chapter 14 contains um, kings and uh, so Genesis chapter 14 talks about, gives us Arabic word for Malik and also for Malik. So in Genesis 14, we read the king, name of the, all the kings, they are Malik. They just straight Malik with no Aleph. Yes. And then in again Genesis chapter 14, it's in the same chapter, we read the verse with Elif, Malik, only. Malik, yes. a long A, uh, with a dagger Aleph that's added at later, uh, yeah. later on. And that so, dagger Aleph makes it owner. Yeah, so in Arabic Bible, there is a distinction between Malik and Malik. Even though Muslims come say, oh, it doesn't matter stuff, but actually it does matter. And in the Bible, we put it in different form, how it's supposed to be, sadly. Uh, in the Quran. Quran fails to do that in um, in different formats. Okay. Now what I'm going to do to to save time, yeah, I'm going to do a rendition. I'm just going to go through a summary of everything we've gone through. I, where's your warsh? Let's just this do one. between the hafs and the warsh. Okay. So let's do between these two. Let's just look at what we now have found between just these two books. Yeah. Now, Hatum, we have 26 books here. Yeah. You haven't had time to go through all of this yet. Even the team in Melbourne hasn't had time to go through all of these. You've just had time really to go through Hafs and Warsh. Yeah. And this is what you have found just between these two. Once you have gone and checked it with an Arab speaker and an Arab teacher, yeah. this is what they have showed you. Surah 1, Ayah 4, owner of the day, Maliki. In your case? It's the uh, king of the day. So it's Ma, Ma, Maliki, just simple. Yeah. Uh, Surah 2, Ayah 10, in the Hafs, they lie, Yadibuna. In verse 1, it is, they were lied to. It's yukadhibuna. Yukadhibuna, okay. In Surah 2, Ayah 58, we give mercy, which is nakfir. In um, Walsh version, it is yakfur, we, he gives mercy. So from we to he. Yeah. In Surah 2, Ayah 125, you should take, in the wash, it is what? They have taken. In Surah 2, Ayah 132, and Ibrahim enjoined on his sons, wawasa, in, in the wash. It's in the uh, Walsh one, it's Wa'afsa, it is, and Abraham instructed his sons. In Surah 2, Ayah 140, in the Hafs version, you say, Takuluna changes to? Uh, yakuluna. Okay, instead of Takuluna, it becomes Yakuluna, yakuluna they, say. they say. In Surah 2, Ayah 184, a redemption by feeding a poor man, Ta'amu miskinin becomes? Uh, redemption by feeding poor man. Uh, so it in, comes in, in a group format, Ta'ami Masakina. So from one man to, to group of a man. group of men. Yeah. In Surah 2, Ayah 214, in the Hafs, it says, So that they said, Hatta Yakula. Okay, in Walsh version, it's Hatta Yakulu. Yak, hatta Yakulu. Until they said. So they said becomes until they said. In Surah 2, Ayah 259, we shall raise up Nun Shizuha. Versus Nun. Suruhna. Nun shiruha. We shall make alive. So from nun shizuha becomes nun shiruha. We shall make alive instead of we shall raise up. That's yeah. quite a bit different. Raising, holding someone up versus bringing them back to life. Surah 3, Ayah 81. I give you atay tukum. Uh, atay nakum. 
verse which means uh, we give you. So from I give you, you versus comes we, we give, you. give you. That's a hugely different reference point there. So three I O one thirty three and hasten to wasariu becomes saariu hasten to hasten to and hasten to becomes just hasten to. So three I O one forty six. The prophets fought Katala in Hafs becomes Kutala were killed. Kutila. Kutila were killed. Were killed. So they either fought or they died. I will go with the Hafs on that one uh, if, if I was a prophet. So for Ayah 152, he gives them Yutihim becomes in Dwarsh. Ah, Nutihimu. No 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 we give them. give them. No he move, we give, give them. them. So is it he giving them or we giving them? Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's quite a bit difference right there. In Surah 5, Ayah 54, Yartada, turn back, becomes in Warsh. Yartadit, which is in order form. In an order form, Yartadit, you're right. So t Surah 21, Ayah 4, Kala, he said, my Lord knows, becomes. Cool. My Lord, say my Lord knows. Say my Lord. It's God speaking. It's yes. imperative. Only God speaks like that. Surah 28, Ayah 48. Two works of magic, Sihrani becomes Saharin. Saharini. Sahirani. Two magicians. So two works of magic becomes two, two men of magic. <laughs> Surah 34, Ayah 17. We punish Nugazia. Yugaza, which becomes gets punished. So we do it or you get punished. Yeah. I'd rather be the Hafs. In every case, the Hafs has it better for me if I was a prophet or if I was someone doing the punishment or if I was God, obviously. Surah 91, Ayah 15. And for him, no fear. Walaya kufu becomes falaya kufu. Therefore, for him, no fear. Falaya kafu. Well, therefore, for him, no fear. Yes. Now, we're we're just going through a few of these because it's going to take us all day. Yeah. Because how many have you found just between these two um, books? If you compare Hafs version, Hafs version of the Quran versus Warsh version of the Quran, you can easily come up over one thousand three hundred. You have already found 1,300. I counted them. You count, and you're not even finished it. There will no. be others so, that and you I've yet got, to find. I've got a um, Walsh version of the Quran, which is written by different students, which are, they are disagreeing with one another. So this is like general Walsh. And then we've got another two Qurans different from. So you have three different renditions of the Walsh Quran. Yes. How many have you found amongst the Hafs? Because we've only heard there's only one Hafs. Uh, there are, I think we've got six Hafs, I think. So six different yeah, Huffs, yeah. not just one, not just two, not just three, six different mm -hmm. Huffs versions. Yeah. So can we you see? Only, we all need to look at them and then see what are the differences. Does it change the meaning of it? Or it just, seriously, it just, just doesn't make any changings. But so far, the things we look, yes, there are a couple of verses or vocabularies doesn't change anything. We don't even need to talk about them. But there are over 1,300 between Huffs and Walsh version. They changed the meaning of the Just this one and that Huffs. Yes. Because there are six of these and there's another three of that. Yes. You're only looking at one of them versus one of the other six. Yes. And you found already 1,300 differences. And yes. these are consonantal differences. These change the meaning. As you yes. have seen, that's why I went through it. Now, just hand me any one of those up there. In fact, why don't you give me a few of them? Let me just why take this. And when you open it up, I'm just going to open up to any given page. Okay, Make sure it's the right side up. And I'm just going to show the camera here. I did this on the corner yesterday, and boy, the Muslims got angry. If you just take okay, it, okay. Up. Let me just tell you what Quran you are holding right now. You are holding the Quran which has been sent to Mecca, Abdullah ibn Abi Shaid, and this is by Ibn Kathir al student um, students Ibn Kathir students is al Bazai al Bazi, and in here we are seeing the what uh, al Bazi write. Also on the red writings, we are seeing what the Kumbul, who was the other student of Ibn Kathir, disagrees with. Okay, so every time you see a red word, I can open up almost any page, there's a red word. I can open up another page, there's one, two, three, four, five, six red words. These are where the students have disagreed with the teacher. Yes. These are different words. These are what we call manuscript variants. So students are disagreeing with one another. Even with they each other. They are learning from one teacher, they are disagreeing with one another. And in each case, you can see almost every page. This is just one example yeah. of where we can find this. Give me another example. Okay. This is the Quran uh, which was sent to Surya, according to tradition. This is the uh, Al Duri Quran from Abu Amar Allah. Now, if you look, I'm just opening Remember, at random. I'm just opening random. Al -Duri, so this, is this is from the Al Duri who, who studied Al under Allah, not, not yeah. Al Kisal. We're looking at Al Allah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
12. I'm looking at 12, oh, 12 13, 14, 14 differences between the two pages. Yeah. I just took this at random. I could open up almost any page and look at, look at these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I, I run out. This is Alduri completely disagreeing with yeah. not only with the other students, but also with his teachers. Yeah. We need to work out all those differences, all those variations change the meaning of the sentence or not, but so far this Quran is already telling us there are the differences. So this Quran is just telling us there is the variations and on that. And this you can buy today yeah, in exactly. Syria, or you can buy it in Jordan, or you can Lebanon, buy it in Yemen. Lebanon. These are in existence all over the Arab-speaking world. Yeah. These are Arab Qurans. These are not translations, folks. These are the supposedly the original Arab Quran. But look at all the disagreements we have with well-known students. These are scholars. These are not just people off the street like you or me saying, I want to read it this way or I want to write it this way. These are, well, intellectual, yeah. scholarly people. And then um, this one is the Hafs Quran, but red writings are is what Susi is disagreeing with Hafs. Al Susi, look at all yeah. the different places he disagrees. I mean, you can see entire phrases, entire sentence here. Here's an entire sentence that he disagrees with. So whenever you see that, these are the, now what they've done is they put in the margin. So you what, can figure out what are the disagreements. What they would rather put, and this is yeah. what they think it should be. Now, can you understand why when people come up to us and say there's only one Quran and it's read the same way all over the world? Uh, we're just giving you a smattering of different ones of the ones we've come across. Yeah. This, which is this one here? Yeah, it is said, this is the Ruh one. It is said actually because um, for not every Quran tells us what are the disagreements between students, but it just tells us there are the disagreements. It's, I think it is a shame that we can't just turn up the Islamic bookshop and buy one Quran, which we can see what are the disagreements, what is the meaning of the sentence, how it affects. It is said like in 2016, we have to work them out by ourselves. But in here, we've got the Quran um, by Yaqub al-Hashim. Uh, this is the Ruh Quran. And then it just tells us what the Ruyas, who is the other student, is disagreed. You can just see them. Again, those reds are the what other student Ruyas. And I'm just going to do randomly open page by page by page. I mean, there's not a page where there's not these disagreements. There are so many disagreements by these scholars that do not agree on what Quran. So we cannot say anywhere that these are all, all of these Qurans are in agreement. Not one of them is in agreement. Not one of the 26 we're looking at. We're getting hundreds and hundreds. But we wanted to find out more what the disagreements are. Now, before we, before we begin, before we conclude this whole thing, what I want to do, that's a huge pile of books. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring a chair over here, and I want you to tell me exactly the names of every one of those books, why they're important, so that Muslims can realize we're not just showing you the same Quran yeah. in many different forms. Yeah. Uh, it's, that would be helpful. Let's do that so that they can see what we're talking about. Okay, so let's start with the very common one. Uh, this is the Hafs Quran, which has been canonized in 1924. So this is the... One that we use at Speaker's Corner every yeah. Sunday. This is the Hafs. Yeah. This is the Quran by Al-Dari, which was actually sent to Surya by, by uh, Surya to, with Al-Bukhari ibn Shahub around 670s. And uh, in Damascus, Abu Amir Allah, who uh, Duri was the student of Ali, um, Amir Allah. So in this Quran, we've got what the Susi is disagreeing with Al-Duri. Okay. Okay. So here we have scholars from 670 and 770. Yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. So you're talking about the 8th century. This is yeah. very old. Okay. And in here we've got Quran by Hafs. Um, this comes from Abu Bakr Asim. In here we've got what Susi is disagreeing with Hafs. Okay. And the dates for Al Susi are uh, uh, Susi's dates, seven seven eight. Uh, yeah, after seven eight. After seven seven eight. So eighth century. So yeah. this is eighth century as well. So these are. These are disagreements that have been going on for 1,300 years. So in here, we've got Yaqub al-Hashimi. This is the Ruh Quran. And in here, we've got what Ruwais, who was the other student with Ruh, is disagreeing with him. So all those red lines would be for that. Okay, so again, a third one. Now we got a fourth one. Okay, maybe you put them in other side, yeah? And in here, we've got Quran um, al-Harit, uh, who is the student of al-Qisra. And in this Quran, which gives us what is the... Al-Duri is disagreeing with um, Al-Harid. Okay, and this is from the 9th century, 804. Yeah. Uh, so we're getting now into the 9th century. Now we're getting 1,200 years old that these disagreements have been going on. Okay. This is um, Al-Bazi Quran by Ibn Kathir. And in here we see some of the disagreements what 
Kumbel, uh, he's the other student with Albazi, is disagreeing with him. And this is the date for this one is 737, so we're yeah. back to the 8th century. Yeah. This is 1300 years ago. Yeah. And this, this is the general Vorskran, you can just buy it in uh, North Africa. Okay, this is the one that you have been using yeah. all the way through, that's why you have so many tabs on it. Okay. And this one is again Hapskran by Abu Bakr Asim. And this is, we see what Shaba is disagreeing, but it goes back to the root of Shahabataya. So we need to all kind of work out what are the disagreements, all those things, but you can see that. Okay, and we're, there, this one we haven't really gone through all of this. Yeah. There's an awful lot to do on this, but it's 778, yeah. so it's 8th century. Yeah, this is one of the Quran which uh, which kind of comes from um, Kufa by Abu uh, Abu Ahab uh, Rahman, uh, another Hafs Quran, and in this one we see what Ibn Amar is disagreeing with Hafs. Ibn Amr. Um, actually, Abu Bakr Asim Hafs, which is the 778 one, yeah. that's 8th century as well. Much yeah. the same time period as the one below it. Uh, another Hafs Quran, but in this one we see what Abu Jafar is disagreeing with. Abu Jafar, so it's like the other two, it's around the 8th century as well, yeah. late 8th century. Um, another late 8th century Quran, another Hafs Quran. In this one we see what Kulin is disagreeing with. Kulin is the one of the students of Nafi, uh, late 8th century. Late 8th century again. Yeah. So we're now getting out to the 4th Hafs Quran. Okay, this is another Hafs Quran. Uh, in here we see what Al Duri is disagreeing, Abu Omar Al Basari, and he is disagreeing um, with Kisra. Okay. So Kisal, this is his student Al Duri, the blind. Yeah. He was. No Al Duri is the student of Kisra. Okay, Kisra, but he is known as the blind. The blind one. Yeah. The blind one. Okay, and this is late eighth century as well. Yeah. Another late um, eighth century. This is the Quran which is uh, supposed to be sent to the Kufa. This is the Hamsa Khalaf Quran. And in this Quran, we see what is the Khalid is disagreed with Khalaf. So both of them are the student of Hamza. And they both are disagreeing. So there we have another 8th century. Okay. Hafs, go ahead. Um, another uh, Hafs Quran from Kufa. In this one, we just see what Ibn Katir is disagreeing with Hafs. And again, okay. late 8th century. So Margins are showing the disagreements, which we all need to study and see what are the disagreements. In. This is something really Muslims need to do, don't yeah. they? It's if, amazing that you've done it, but listen. It would be helpful if, we if get they would do their own work. You're right. Yeah, and this is one of the Quran was sent um, Quran from Medina, um, Zaid bin Talib. This is the um, uh, Walsh version, but this is Al Azraq form. So this is Al Azraq, yeah. and the dates for him are 785. Yes, yes late 8th century. 785, late 8th century again. That's the one. Um, Abu Jafar Quran by Ibn Jamas, and in this one we see what um, Ibn Wardan is disagreed, but this is the Dora way, okay? The Dora way. Yes, not Duri, Dora way. Dora, so it's not Duri, but Dora, yeah. like a woman's name, Dora. Okay, Ibn Wardan disqualified. So that's okay. fascinating. So there's another one Yang that disagrees. And this one is from Basra, um, Ibn Amir Hisham in Abad. This is Dahakum, I think my pronunciation is wrong on that, Dahakum. Um, we see what Dahakum is disagreeing with Hisham ibn Bi Amar. So Dahakum is from the Basra as well. And the date for this is 736, yeah. so yeah. early 8th century, even earlier. Yeah, another Quran, Kalaf al Asar. This is Al Dura one. That's the one we liked, the Al Dura we had before. Yeah, not Duri, Dura. Okay. Dura, there's, I know. There yeah. is the Dura, like on the name of the woman. Okay, um, another Quran from Kufa. This is Abu Bakr Asim ibn Ayas, Al Sam bin Ali um, Najat. Okay, so you can see the, all the, those red. Writings, 778 again, so this yeah. is late 8th century. Almost, have you noticed, almost all of these are very early disagreements. They still exist today. And you can see, I can open up almost any page and there is the red. There are the red disagreements. These yeah. are the words that they are saying, we're not putting this, we didn't write these. These are going on from 778, late 8th century. These disagreements are already being found. Um, Sadly, not every Quran gives us all the disagreements. We need to work them out, but there are some has been very generous and they've been helpful. So, being very helpful in helping us that way. This is um, another half Quran by Abu Bakr Asim. This is what Yaqub is disagreeing with him. Okay, again, you can see the margins and disagreements on that. Eighth century, late eighth century again. This is thirteen hundred years ago. Okay, this is the Quran to Kufa, Abu Ar Rahman as Sulaimani, Abu Bakr Asim from Hafs, and this is. Kalaf al, what Kalaf al Asir is disagreeing with. Um, again, it's the student, Kalaf um, al Asir is the student of Hamza. This is 778, late yeah. 8th century. Boy, we're getting an awful lot of these that have been disagreeing almost from the very beginning. Uh, Medina, uh, this is the Zaid Bantevit. This is Nafi Warsh Quran, but it is 
Al Asabari. And this one comes from 785. So it's another seven years later that this agreement card starts to come in. Yeah. These are the simple Swanna. This is Nafi and just Kualin one. Okay. So we'll put that one right up here. Yeah. This is the Quran which was sent the, uh, according to tradition to Mecca. Uh, Ibn Katir Kumbul one, this is also in here we see, but Al Bazi is disagreeing with him. Al Bazi is again student of Ibn Katir. So and this is very early. This is 737, yeah. which makes it in the early 8th century. And in here we've got the Quran to Kufa again. This is Hamza and uh, it comes from the Qalaf. And 772. So it predates most all of those Qurans that, that are Hafs. From 778. Okay, uh, this is the Quran to Basra. Uh, Ibn Amir, this is the Quran by, Hish uh, by Hisham, who is a student of Ibn Amir. And um, Hisham gives us also in the Quran also we see what the, the Hakum is disagreeing with him. So both of, both of those people are from Basra. 736, early 8th century. Are you can see, we're talking about this has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And this is the Quran by Al Qasra, Abu Haritwa. And in here we see what Al Duri is disagreeing with him. So one of them is from Kufa, other one is from Syria. And this is ninth century, a little yeah. bit later. Now uh, the uh, book you're opening up now is very special. Why is that an interesting uh, book? Th this is the very easy and simple one because this contains the ten, ten readings. Sadly, it doesn't give us what are the different readings. It just tells us, oh, there are the, the readings you can get it. it. It took ages to find all those things. But when you just open page, all those color codes tells you actually there are the difference in other versions of the Quran. So of course we need to work out if it does change the meaning of the Quran or meaning of the verse or it is just a uh, pronunciation of it. So all those things need to uh, be looked at for. This is the kind of which one makes our life easier. That It makes life need, easier. Yeah, we need to have this to figure those, those Qurans are. out. Yeah. And that's what you've been doing. You've been doing, this is just the first 10 that yeah. you're looking at. You now have, there are now 1,300 that we could, I'm sorry, there are 26 that we could look yeah. at. And of course, in all the 26, we're finding many, many of these. I see you're writing this all up because you have found so much that's different, yeah. so much that has changed. Yeah. Now, folks, we're going to conclude with what, we, what this all means. These ones that we've shown you, these are actual changes in meanings. Now, we could go on all day, going, giving you example after example. We could go through all 1,300. Yeah. Back down in Melbourne, in Australia, there's another group doing this. These are Arab scholars. They're Arab. Uh, they are all Arab speakers. And they are going through and looking at the Hafs and the Wash, but they're looking at the other ones as well. They have 17. We've got 26. They only have 17. Their hands are full. They have already found 5,000 disagreements between the ones they're looking at. By next year, it'll probably be a few more thousand. Every year, we're going to be adding to this list. Uh, this is in 2016. Mm. Today is August the 8th. Eighth. The eighth, uh, today, eight, August the 8th. We have already found 1,300 diff differences here in London uh, between the Huffs and the Wash. One example of the six Huffs and one example of the three Washes. We have already found 1,300. Yeah. Now we're going to continue to do this. You can do that as well, Muslims. You need to realize uh, this is the first time you've ever heard this. The reason why so many Muslims yesterday, they were all Arab speakers, got so angry, as you can see in the video, is because they have never been told this before. None of their Imams have ever told this. The academics know about this. In fact, some of those at Speaker's Corner, Mansour Ahmad, he knows about this. Paul Williams, they admit that these are there, although they still continue to say that these are nothing more than different readings. These are nothing more than when you read the text, you read it, you read it orally differently. No, these are not different readings. These are textual differences. These are canonical, consonantal differences. These change the meaning. I hope you got that from the examples we've given you. Uh, we don't. We couldn't give you all of them. There are too many. There are thousands that we can deal with. Just to show you that this is something the Quran, the Muslims, and the Quranic scholars need to admit, need to own up to, and the Muslim world needs to realize. You've got many Qurans today. These are all modern day Qurans. These are not archaic, ancient Qurans from the 7th, 8th, and 9th century. Every one of these you can buy in your marketplaces. Go back, look at them. You do this homework. Thank goodness, Hatun, for all the great work you have done. Uh, pouring through line after line after line, and then going to your Arab helpers, making sure that what you're finding is what they're seeing, and letting them actually translate it for you and show that these completely change the meaning from the Hafs to the Wash. Plus, it is a shame that we don't have... Um, we don't, still, we've got Muslims just telling around there is only one Quran. It has been unchanged, all those kind of things. But now we've got 26 Qurans. We try to look at some of them 
and there are lots of lots of more we need to look at and I think we just encourage Muslims to start like stop saying that there is only one Quran and yeah. it hasn't been changed it is exactly the same that will be helpful for your dear Muslim brothers and sisters as well as well as well your Christian um, sisters in humanity. I think also it'll help Muslims who always claim the Bible has been changed. And they're saying that there are 400,000 differences. Yeah. 400,000 uh, variations. variations they're looking at. Now, we know that are, these 400,000 are copies of copies of copies of copies that come from one variation. And what most Muslims don't realize is that when you go look at, when I mean, we have thousands of manuscripts to look at, yeah. uh, we have 5,300, 5,839 Greek manuscripts. 5,839 Greek manuscripts. We have 10,000 Latin Vulgates. We've yeah. got another 9,000 in other language. Roughly 26 to 27,000 mm -hmm. manuscripts we can look at. So we are com for the b b biblical side, we are comparing over 5,000 Greek manuscripts. And then we are saying, yes, there are the variations. Number of the variations are approximately 400,000. But Muslims are comparing their manuscripts. For example, they are looking at the top couple versus current Hafs Quran, there are 2,270 variations, only one comparison, only one writings, versus we've got five th over 5,000 writings, 400,000 variations. So that makes approximate one manuscript to has op op approximate 17 variations, versus in Islam, just only from one manuscript, one um, completed top couple, we've got two, over 2,000 variations. Okay, so let's unpack that, because like, that's so an awful lot of what people are trying to hear. Now, when you hear this word, this word 400,000 variations, yeah. what it comes back to is that's what exists all the way through the Greek speaking world with all yes. the 5,000 manuscripts, yes. 5,800. Now, let's go back. Many of them are copying, let's say, one word that is different from the others. Yeah, that and makes... that one word can be traced back to one manuscript. Let's just take the P45 manuscript mm -hmm. that is in Dublin. Uh, yeah. That has a reference to John, uh, Jesus going to the upper room with the 12. Yeah. It just says Jesus went to the upper room with the 12. That was then repeated many, many times. Later on, a someone, one of the scribes wrote after disciples, I'm sorry, after the 12, the exactly. word disciples. Yeah. Knowing that, hold on a minute, what 12 is he talking about here? Someone may not know that these are the 12 disciples. Yeah. So he put the word disciples in. From that time, every scribe that came after that wrote disciples in there. Yeah. Now that's all right there, 100,000 of the 400,000 is just that one word that's been added on. Yeah. Now, of them, yeah. that's a quarter of all the, of the manuscript variants that we have found. Whether, and on, when you look at that together, so that's one of the 17 you're looking at, that's just one of them. Whether you say Jesus went to the upper room with the 12 or with the 12 disciples, does yeah. that change the meaning? No, it doesn't change the meaning. At all. It doesn't change the meaning at all. We know that. That's normal. Yeah. We know that scribes can add a word here or add a word there yeah. or even add a letter here or add a letter there. I think other thing is important to mention, Christians have been very honest about it. I can go to the bookshop, buy a Bible, in my Bible, it just tells me, oh, that many secrets is with these variations, these variations. But I cannot buy something for the Quran like that. So as a Christians, we've been open about it because we know Bible is the word of God, revelation to the yeah. word of God, and it affects our eternity. We care about it and then we, we are open about it. Versus in the Quran for Islamic circle, we can't find those things. I no. think it was already time for a couple of centuries ago for Muslims to just produce us Quran with the different variations on it. So on one hand, we are now found hundreds, in fact, thousands of variations already in just yeah. the, what, the modern day Qurans. These are modern day. Yeah. Almost everything that the Muslims are pointing to are archaic manuscripts, old manuscripts. Modern day, there aren't any variations anymore other than the fact translations or different versions of way of saying the same thing. Yeah. But certainly from the archaic manuscripts in the, of, the, of the Greek manuscripts, uh, we pretty well are only looking there are only 40 verses that are in doubt. Now For remember, Bible, yeah. that's not variations, that's not manuscript difference, that's verses that should not be there or should be there, yeah. and we warn the readers where they are. Yeah. As far as verses that have variants on it, we know where all the variants are. Yep. Yeah. And that's why we have Nestle's and we have um, Bruce Metzger, who has gone through and, and listed every one of them. Yeah. So we know where they all are. And do they change the meaning of any verse? No, it doesn't change the meaning of, of the any verse. Yeah. And the reason it, why it that doesn't, doesn't bother you or me, why doesn't that bother us that there are these variations in the Bible? Uh, first of all, we are open about it. Plus, it, we know Bible is written by human beings. Ah. Human beings makes mistakes. So we don't and, make this claim yeah. that it's eternal. And we go back and then we can chase, back the, chase those mistakes back and then we can come up with the originals. But for the for the Quran so we don't make a claim regarding the Bible it is the 
Bible as a book, it is the eternal word of God. And we know that men wrote it. Yes, we know. Inspired by God. Inspired by God, written by four. Written four, by five men. Four, approximately 40 different people in the different locations. Three different continents. Yeah. Three different languages. Yeah. Over 1400 years. Yeah. And yet we can pretty well know that we can trust 99.9% .9 of it. This British we, Museum was, shows us that. That British Museum, the British Library, it's amazing what they have yeah. stored there. But the great thing about the Bible is we know it is not eternal, like the Muslims claim the Quran is eternal. Yeah. We know that it was not sent down to one man, like the Muslims believe it was sent down to Muhammad. We know that it was not canonized at one period, like the Muslims believe, and that are, un, uh, are completely confused. We now know their canonization is just less than 100 years ago. Yeah. The canon of the New Testament uh, was already in existence by the 3rd, 4th century. We already knew. Yeah. In fact, by the 1st and 2nd century, we already knew which 20, uh, 26, seven, uh, book, seven books yeah. of the New Testament would be long. The early church fathers had already agreed on that. Yeah. What's important is none of the church fathers, when they, uh, when they accumulated all these 27 books, none of them suggested that they were somehow magical books that come from God. Yeah. They were inspired by God and that every man wrote it in their, using their own abilities and using yeah. their own idiomatic expressions. That's why you have four different gospels, four different ways of saying the same story. Yeah. So we don't let make the claims that Muslims make, and that's why we don't get angry when uh, people show us that there are variations in the Bible. We know the variations are there. Yeah. That's nothing new for us. No, Muslim, no Christians got angry when the Muslims say, you've corrupted our Bible, uh, we've corrupted our Bible. The first question we ask them is, does the Quran agree with you on that? Knowing that, we know where the variations are. We know exactly uh, where the verses that are in doubt are. We've been very honest, as Hatun has said. Muslims, you need to start being honest. And you need to start admitting there is not one Quran. In fact, it looks like there's a multiplicity of Qurans. That's just within the 7th and 8th and 9th century. But even today in the 21st century, just look at all these Qurans. None of them agree completely. They agree in the main, but there are variations all through them. Almost every page has disputes about which words should be there by different scholars, students of different teachers, who don't believe this word should be there, this word should be there. That's still going on today, and we're now 1,400 years after Muhammad. We leave this with you. This has been a good time to unpack what we did on yesterday. Go up and look at both of them. Understand why Muslims do get angry. And Muslims, if you do get angry and you now are starting to have doubt about your Quran, you know where you can come to. Come on home. Come on home. It's so good to know that we have a Bible that doesn't have these problems. Uh, we don't ever claim what you, your scholars have been claiming. Uh, don't get angry with us. Get angry with your scholars. Get angry with the Imams who have been telling you week after week, month after month, year after year, the Quran has never changed. It is the same Quran we have today as in heaven that was revealed through the, uh, to the Prophet Muhammad by the angel Gabriel. That is not true. Not after today. You can't say that anymore. All right. This is Jane. And Hatton from London. Here in London, over and out. <laughs>